Hello everyone, Jim Page, fly fishing for the rest of us. So let's say you're going down to the Panhandle of Florida for a vacation with your family, girlfriend, children, in-laws, and you want to get a little fishing in. And we're going to talk about the warmer times of the year, the May through September, when most people are going down for their vacation. The good news is, you can actually get some pretty decent fishing in without impacting your family activities, and I'm going to tell you how you can do that. And we'll talk a little bit about locations, we'll talk about sand, the type of bottoms there are, and we'll, if we have a chance, we'll talk a little bit about flies. So if you think about Panama City, and I've got a lot of experience and knowledge fishing this area, it's really multiple bays or lagoons. And I'll zoom in. You have the West Bay, you have Grand Lagoon, you have North Bay that goes along Panama City proper by the old airport all the way up to Lynn Haven, up to the dam at Deer Point Lake. You've got San Andrews Bay, that's by the State Park and also by the pass out to the ocean. And this area here along the Air Force Base is considered St. Andrews Bay. And then you have East Bay. And East Bay goes along the um, along Parker and the Air Force Base all the way back, all the way back to Watapo Creek, which is the beginning of the Intercoastal Waterway. And Watapo Creek runs down and joins up with Appal the Apalachicola River and dumps out at Apalachicola. So the good, the good news about fishing this time of the year in the warmer months is most of the fishing, in my opinion, is best from first light till between 8, 30, and 10 in the morning to when it really gets hot. Uh, when I say first light, if sunrise is at 5, 30 a.m. or 6 a.m., you really want to be at the water, your fly rods, rigged up, ready to fish when there's still a little gray light, actually before the sun cracks the horizon. So that gray just before sunrise is when you want to be putting your first cast in. And you can fish till anywhere from 8.30 to 10 o'clock, and then you can wrap it up and then go back and meet the family for breakfast and go to the beach, and then you can fish on the beach too. I think the inshore fishing in the summer months is best early in the morning and then late in the afternoon and in the evening hours when it cools off again. I don't think it's that good during the middle of the day, which is convenient because that's when everybody wants to go to the beach. So we're going to zoom in a little bit, and we're going to talk about some areas you can fish on the inside in the bays and lagoons without a boat, kayak, or a stand-up paddleboard. These areas have fairly decent sand bottom, and they're readily accessible. The first area, let me really zoom in, is right before the bridge, the Hathaway Bridge. And you'll see on the north side, there's the Gulf Coast State College. Well, right here, right before the bridge, and if you're going from east to west, if you're going from Panama City proper to Panama City Beach, it would be on the right-hand side or the north side of this little finger of land. There's a little strip of sand right here. And it runs behind the college. And you see the flat area here. There are some really nice seagrass here or aquatic uh, grasses here. This bottom is firm. Uh, if you get there early, you know, at first light, there won't be anybody out there. As the day moves on, especially on the weekend, you've got people, there's a little dirt boat ramp. You've got people launching boats. You've got people launching um, sea or jet skis. You've got people putting out their beach chairs, sitting on the sand like they would a beach. So this area gets really busy. But if you get there at first light, there's plenty of places to park. You can wade this area. And when the first, sun first comes up, you can throw top water. And as the sun uh, comes up a little bit more and breaks the surface, you can switch to subsurface, a clouds or minna, uh, seducer, uh, lefties deceiver. Uh, you're, 
Eureka Plugisi minnow, any bait fish imitation will work. And you can fish this area until it gets busy. Then you can pack it up, go back to your hotel, get the family, hit the beach. Uh, floating line is all you need here. I fished anything from a six weight to a nine weight here. And I have caught sea trout, a few reds. Um, there's some Spanish mackerel that run through here. I will tell you this halfway bridge area right here, if you're on a paddle board or a kayak, you see how it narrows here? When the tide is moving, the tide really moves through here quickly. And if you're on a paddle board and you get caught, you're going to get sucked through. It's not a big deal. You can paddle over here and get out with your um, by the boat rentals. You can get your paddle board out and walk back across the street. Or if you worst case, you end up, there's a little boat ramp right here. Oh, sorry. Let me get over a little bit. There's a little paved butt ramp right here. If you get sucked through and you have to paddle back to the um, further west here, you can pull out. You can paddle up, <clears throat> jump out at this boat ramp, and then walk back across the bridge. So if you get sucked through, don't wear, don't wear yourself out trying to fight the current. Just paddle to one of these shores and then go back across the bridge. And this, this is a summer fishery. It doesn't shut down uh, in the summer like some other fisheries does. If you do have a kayak or a paddle board, you'll see there's a... Oh, goodness. This is a summer fishery. I need to pay more attention. This is a good summer fishery. You'll see there's a couple. There's a pretty bayou here. There's another bayou here. Let me get the bayous in picture. There's actually a boat ramp in pretty bayou where you can launch a boat. It's a proper uh, paid boat ramp. You can launch a boat, you can launch a kayak, you can launch a paddleboard. Um, there's not a boat ramp in this bayou. The bayous are good winter fisheries. Um, they're not as good in the summer. They have dark bottoms. But you can launch a boat at Pretty Bayou and paddle out and fish this whole bank right here. This is all fishable water. It's a nice grass flat. There'll be sea trout there in the summer months, some reds. There's some docks here. Anytime you have docks, a good chance you'll have reds around it, maybe sheephead. Uh, it's structure it attracts fish. So that whole area, if you have a kayak or paddleboard, is uh, good. Is good fishing. If you happen to have a military ID, there is a weightable flat right here. There's the visiting officer quarters, and there's a little tiki bar. This flat. Is a good flat. There's a there's a, the marina here, the Navy marina here. Uh, the base commander, the new base commander, kind of narrowed up the fishing alley. This whole flat, you used to be able to weigh this whole flat, and I have caught redfish and sea trout and pompano and bluefish and Spanish mackerel. I've caught everything on this flat. I've seen big tarpon out here in the channel. That's part of the intercoastal waterway. Um, but he kind of limited to the fishing to one little strip, which is really disappointing. Um, there are redfish through here. I have first thing in the morning, if you have a military ID and you can get on base, get down here first thing at first light and throw a top water. You have a good chance of catching redfish. I have done that. I have seen redfish running through here. Maybe I can make my mouse bigger. Um, I've seen redfish running through here when I was just been paddling my kayak around, looking around. So there's redfish through here. There's crabs in here. There's all kinds of bait fish in here in the warmer months. So if you have military ID, that's a good place to go. I have never, I have not seen an alligator through here. I know there's sharks here. There's sharks everywhere. And I have not seen an alligator over here. I'm not saying they're not there. I just not have seen one. Um, there is a little bayou here with the name Alligator Bayou, which is kind of funny. Um, and it goes way back in to the island itself, if you look. And there's a couple of docks over here on the weekends that you can sneak in and fish. If you have a military ID, you can actually fish some docks in here on the weekend and catch um, trout and flounder and jack crevelli and mangrove snapper. And I've seen triple tail in there. I've also caught jacks and crevelli out on this main flat. I've hooked something on the flat I couldn't turn. It just took off and I, I just couldn't turn it. So I had to break it off before it spooled me. 
So you just there's no telling what swims through here during the warm months. And like I said, you can get over in these areas, um, fish early in the morning, then head out and fish, uh, catch breakfast with your family and um, go to the beach during the day. Um, I like an in low incoming tide to fish these flats in the morning. It brings in that cool seawater. You do need moving water incoming or outgoing. It doesn't matter. If you have dead low or dead, dead high, the fishing is going to shut off. But if you have to fish when you can, if you got an outgoing tide in the morning, get over there and fish the outgoing tide. These flats, unlike some flats in other parts of Florida, these flats tend to be deeper. Um, they usually always have water on them, you know, up to five or six feet, depending on how far you are from shore. So don't worry that they're going to be high and dry flats. These flats don't ever go completely dry. You have a foot or two water line, and that's about it. So... If you're staying further on the, uh, if you're not staying on Panama City Beach proper, but over up by Laguna Beach, we usually only fish West Bay in the winter months. This uh, man-made canal here, which is the ICW, let me keep going up. This is a man-made canal. You can tell the way it's very straight. You see that? That's man-made. It's the intercoastal waterway. You can't really fish it from the bank. The banks are very high vertical drop-offs. It's not safe. Um, this almost looks a little more natural down here. This probably was part of the natural right through here and then they dug it out to join the two bays. Like I said, this bottom tends to be softer. There's a power plant here. That is good winter fishery. But this bottom through here all tends to be softer as you can tell because when you have freshwater rivers dumping into the bays it brings sediment into them, and sediment makes a softer bottom. So you can, with a, a small watercraft, you know, a canoe or kayak, or a stand-up paddleboard, and that includes an inflatable paddleboard. You could put in and fish these areas. Like I said, this would be more of a winter fishery. You can also paddle up and fish North Bay on this, what would be the south side of North Bay. There's Deer Point Lake. That's actually a dam. And this is all good fishable water. There's docks. If you drill in, there's docks. And if you have, like I said, some kind of watercraft, you could throw it in and you'll see these docks along here. This is all grass flat. All this is grass flat. And if you've got docks, you have fish. It's structure. There's not, a many, there's not as many places to throw your boat in. There's a boat ramp up here. There's that boat ramp I showed you at that other bayou. Um, there's some folks who do well on redfish around Goose Island. Let me see if I can see where am I at. There we go. This is the old airport. There's some fish folks who do well on redfish through here. It's really shallow through here. It's deceiving. You get over um, toward the military bases where they have that uh, channel, the ICW. But this area right here is shallow from a long distance from shore. You'll see a little man-made channel right through here off the old airport. But this is a lot of shallow water. And I wouldn't wait it, but I would take a watercraft and fish it. It's worth fishing. Same through here where these docks are. This is all seagrass beds, and it's worth fishing. I will say that I have fished this area here. This is all seagrass bed. Caught some trout here. I've looked up in here several times for redfish. You would think that would be, that looks like it would hold redfish. Hadn't seen a whole lot up in here and I don't know why. It's good looking water. Um, it doesn't go bone dry. It's got bait. I just don't know why I haven't ever caught anything. You know, nothing to speak of up there. Same over here. You know, this goes back in. Anytime you have little fingers of water going back in, you know, you think that redfish would push back there looking for crabs and bait and shrimp. But really haven't done much in here. But it's all good fishable water. There's some sand roads that go down towards the water. Um, the sand in the panhandle is that fine sugar sand everywhere. And you will get stuck in that stuff and it doesn't have any body to it. it it's just that really super fine sugar, sugar sand. 
and you can bury your any vehicle up to the axle pretty quick in it. So, you know, be uh, think about that as you start, if you want to snake down some of these dirt roads to get down to the water. I will also tell you, going down, so St. Andrews Bay, the pass here, I have caught a lot of fish out of this pass, out of a boat. Um, it's very deep. It's 80 feet at the bottom, 60 to 80 feet at the bottom. I don't think it's good fly fishing water, even with the full sinking. The tide rips through here. You can fish from the jetties, and a lot of people do. But like I said, the tide really rips through here. And I just don't think it's good fly fishing water. I would recommend it. You'll see this little body right here, Grand Lagoon. This is actually decent fishing. Um, the bottom is soft. It's got docks in it. I recommend a kayak or canoe. There are places to rent kayaks or a stand-up paddleboard. There are places in Panama City Beach to rent kayaks. Um, so don't rule that out. If you have an inflatable stand-up paddleboard, that'd be good too. But this is all fishable water. It's the same thing. It's got flounder, redfish, sea trout in it. Um, some of the other species don't come in it. It's kind of tucked away out of the uh, out of the way and it goes fairly see it goes fairly far in going down towards the Air Force Base so I'm gonna drill in this is the DuPont Bridge and these are all through here. This is all flats. You can tell by looking at Google Earth. This is all flats, grass flats. Um, it's all fishable. There's some docks there. The bottom gets a little soft on the on the north side here by Parker. Blow out a little bit. Um, there's a pulp and paper mill. The bottom gets kind of soft through here. If you're going to fish in here, I would recommend some kind of watercraft. You, I've seen people wading it. You can wade it. But it is, it is kind of soft. And like I said, there's stingrays all through here. There's sharks all through here. Um, I haven't seen a lot of alligators through here on this side, but I have seen a lot of alligators on the other side. So when you look at the DuPont Bridge, there's always some kind of fish under the DuPont Bridge. It could be silver trout. It could be... Um, redfish, it could be grouper, it could be sheephead, it could be tarpon. Uh, a lot of times uh, blue crabs get swept out through here. The tide, because it narrows down here, the tide moves through here pretty quickly. I wouldn't try to paddle against the tide, just like at the other bridge, the Hathaway Bridge, you wear yourself out. But you can always catch some kind of fish around that. Um, the grass flats, let me, sorry, let me zoom back in. So there's some little grass flats here. I um, have caught sea trout here in the winter and bluefish, and I had bluefish eat my sea trout. But in the summer when it's hot, I really haven't done that much here. I will tell you that Pearl Bayou here, um, you don't need a military ID to get to this part, this Tindall Outdoor Recreation Center. It's open on 98, you can drive right to it and you can drive over here. I don't think they check IDs. Um, there's a boat launch here. I will tell you that uh, we have caught redfish and sea trout and flounder in this Pearl Bayou. Nice redfish, sea trout and flounder in the warm months. I will also tell you that prior to the hurricane that came through, there was an extremely large alligator. and He was well known that lived in Pearl Bayou. And he really, he kind of worked this whole area in Pearl Bayou but he also would come around and you'd see him over through here too, which is called uh, Boy Scout Road. And you'll notice that there's um, freshwater bayou here. So there is some um, freshwater back up off on the Air Force Base. And you know, an alligator likes to be by freshwater if they can. And I have seen um, I have seen some alligators through here. There's also seen some sharks through here. So this military point, this area through here, if you have a military ID, is a good place to fish. Sea trout, redfish, um, 
grouper. I caught a legal grouper on this flat, and it's a good ways from the ocean. Um, if you have a boat, you can take a boat here and fish it. This flat never goes dry. It always has water. You just have a water line, a one to two foot water line. So it's a deeper flat and you can fish it with a floating line and you can catch a bunch of their lady fish too. You can catch a bunch of different fish here and I have fished this a lot. It is a good firm bottom, but there is an alligator around there, one big alligator. And there are some sharks that run through here. This area, when you first come onto the base, so this area is a good firm bottom. I have never caught squat here. I've never seen anybody catch squat here. I don't know if anyone has ever caught squat there. For some reason, there's just, no one ever catches anything there. And I've seen, I can't even tell you how many people I've seen trying to fish here, but I have never seen anybody catch anything here. Um, if you do, so that's, that's outside the main gate. That's on 98. That's open. You can drive through it. On Tyndall Air Force Base itself. Now, Tyndall got devastated during the, the hurricane that came through, Michael. I mean, it got devastated. Um, there are some places to fish here. Waitable. If you have military ID. I'll show you real quick. This little pond here at the end of the bay caught nice trout and flounder in it. You need to fish it with a um, some kind of watercraft. It's not weightable. There is a alligator that lives in there. He's about seven, eight foot. And he's not scared of people. I think people dump their bait out. There's a little dirt boat ramp. And I think people have dumped their bait out there. And he knows he's associated people with food. And um, so just keep an eye on him. This point right here is a good area to fish. If you have a watercraft, stand up paddleboard or kayak, you can you can take a boat and go all the way up here. This bank here, see archery range here. This bank is very fishable. This whole point, I've seen redfish up in the shallow water here. I've caught redfish, sea trout, Spanish mackerel, bluefish. I've seen um, a pregnant six foot black tick breach right here get ready to layer pups i've hooked many two to four foot black tick sharps through here there is an alligator here uh what have I? i've caught just about everything in this area it's a fishy area and i tell you if you look here there are times when there is a second pass. This area here. There are times when big storms come through and open up a second pass here. Out to the Gulf of Mexico. And when that second pass is open, the fishing is that much better. The impacts of the red tides are less. Um, right now it's closed up, which is a shame. At one time, the federal government dredged it back open because there's an endangered mouse that lives on this uh, this shell island and feral cats were wiping out the mouse so they opened the pass back up to keep the cats trapped all the cats and opened up the pass to keep the cats off the island but now it's closed up again but when that's open the fishing here really goes well i've seen baby manta ray swim through here when that pass was open you'd see baby manta ray coming through here there are of course there's stingrays here there's cow rays um if you do have a um boat or or some kind of watercraft. I wouldn't do it in a stand-up paddle board, but if you have a kayak or a boat, the backside of Shell Island here is all fishable water. This Spanish shanty point here, all the way down to Lands Pier. It's all good grass flats. It's all fishable water all through there. Can't go wrong. All right. I will talk a little bit about something outside of Panama City Bay, the Panama City Bay complex. You'll see this next bay down southeast. It says St. Andrew's Sound. But also, you'll see it also referred to as Crooked Island. Most people call this next sound down. 
Most people call this Crooked Island Sound. And you can access the north end from the Air Force Base. It's got a good hard sand flat at the north end. It's um, right here. This is good hard sand flat. And I've caught a lot of flounder, some redfish and sea trout and ladyfish through here. This is also good hard sand flat, but you need a watercraft to get across here. I've actually caught fish all the way up into this little salt pond, which is actually accessible from the Tyndall Air Force Base beach access. You can walk down, there's a path there and walk across. This is a dune lake. Gosh, I should be showing you all this. Let me get it over. You can walk down the Air Force Base path here and fish this little salt pond and I've caught croaker and um, trout and redfish and flounder in here. I've also caught little black tip sharps in here, black tip sharks in here that are about a foot long. So the black tits do come in here and pup, lay their pups, and there's also a bunch of big bull sharks that come in here. So don't be surprised, you'll see a nine foot bull shark swimming through this area. Um, this is a dune lake, it's not salt water. I have seen a ginormous cottonmouth water moccasin crawling along under the boardwalk here to go to this dune lake, every bit of six foot long, as big as they make them. And there's more dune lakes throughout the panhandle and they have alligators and they have cottonmouth water moccasins in them. And there's also rattlesnakes. Up in these sand dunes, you'll see rattlesnakes all through here too. So just use a little common sense, keep your eyes open and you'll be fine. Now on East Bay, and this is, a, you know, what we said accessible if you have military ID. On East Bay, you can go further down. And there is some accessible water down further on East Bay with a kayak or a paddleboard. Um, the North Bank here, uh, Cook Bayou, all through here, that bottom tends to be soft, not really that weightable, not fun to wade. Um, you can launch, there's a butt ramp up by Sandy Creek. You can launch there and paddle out and fish that. Um, you can paddle all over through here and fish this. This is not bad. There are trout um, and redfish all through here in the warmer months. When you go further up and get toward Watapo Creek, all the way over here, this is really a winter fishery. The redfish will go up in here and the sea trout will go up in here and they'll go way up in here, believe it or not. Um, I've caught a sea trout in here and then go down the shore a little bit and caught a largemouth bass. This is all something you need a watercraft, a, a kayak, a pedal kayak, a boat. Um, this is not weightable at all. I wouldn't even bother. You can get down through here some and it's weightable. Um, right here, let me zoom in right here. So this is part of the Air Force Base, but it's not behind the gate. And you'll see there's a bayou here. This bayou is not weightable, but um, this is weightable. It drops off pretty deep. And this has uh, redfish and sea trout in the warmer months. This in the colder months, this dark bayou here, it will have some fish in it. But it's more of a winter fishery. So if you've got a small watercraft or an inflatable paddleboard or a paddleboard, kayak, canoe, there's a lot of fishable water here. Just be careful around the passes and the bridges. The tide really rips. Now, uh, say that you slipped in, you missed the fishing on the inshore. Everyone's going to the beach. Well, what do you do? It's really simple. All the Gulf of Mexico beaches fish pretty similar. I mean... Let me get on in here. So in a generic sense, your Gulf of Mexico beaches have the shoreline where the water is breaking. Then they have a trough. And then they have a hump that comes up where the, the trough is deeper. Then it has like a little sandbar or a little rise. And then it has another trough. Then it might have another rise that has 15 to 20 foot of water on it, and then it drops off to deep water. To give you an example, if you're three miles off the coast of Panama City Beach, 
you could be in 70 foot of water. If you're over in the Big Bend area of Florida, Stenahatchee, uh, Grayton Beach, up through that area, around Tall south of, due south of Tallahassee, you could be three miles offshore and be in five foot of water. So this water drops off fairly fast and gets fairly deep. And that's why there's big bull sharks there. Now, in the morning and in the evening, on an incoming tide, those bull sharks will come run that first trough. And that first trough is, could only be four feet deep. So literally, you can walk through the surf, go through that trough, and then come up and get on that first sandbar and only and be in hip deep water or mid thigh water and look between you and the beach. And there could be a bull shark swimming right down between you and the beach looking for dinner. That happened to me. And uh, I don't like having a shark that big between me and the beach. And to be honest with you, I, I'm more comfortable wade fishing around black tip sharks than I am bull sharks. Give me a six foot black tip over a six foot bull shark any day of the week. So it, they're sharks. They come in shallow early in the morning, late in the evening. Don't get out on the past that second bar in that deep water um, with your legs hanging off, you know, have some kind of water, have some kind of surfboard, longboard, stand up paddle board, big kayak, have something to give yourself some protection. We've lost people who go out on boogie boards and get too far off past that second bar where that water starts dropping off 20, 30, 40, 50 feet. And, you know, nine foot bull sharks swim out there for a reason. So just keep that in mind, you know, especially if you've caught a couple lady fish um, and you start wiping with lady fish slime on your bathing suit to get it off your hand. Uh, don't do that. Wash your hands in the water. Try to get that slime off of you. Try not to get that slime on your bathing suit or your shorts. You know, you don't want to have that smell around. And the beaches fish generically all through the panhandle. They usually all have one or two troughs. They have that little high point of land. You can throw uh, clousers, half and halves, uh, something that gets it down. I use an intermediate sinking line to get my line below the waves so you not have your floating line going up and down with the wave, which makes you lose uh, contact with your fly. A nine foot leader is fine, whatever you're comfortable throwing. Uh, fluorocarbon is really not needed, but you can use it if you have it. Uh, you know, a, four, a number four or a number two chartreuse and white clouser, a number two or number four solid white clouser, white and gray clouser. Those are easily bought at any um, any fly shop. Half and halves, if you take uh, an eight or a nine weight with you to fish the beach, you know, a two aught, a number uh, two o chartreuse and white half and half is a good fly, something that really gets down. There are pompano that run the beaches certain times of the year. They're kind of hard to catch with a fly because they're out there a good ways, but there are uh, flies that imitate sand fleas, which is pompanos love them, and so do other fish. You can expect to catch on these beaches ladyfish, redfish, pompano certain times of year if you're lucky. Um, then there's all kind of big pinfish on there. There's sharks that run there if you want to take a 14 weight and a big orange and yellow fly and a steel leader and catch one of those big sharks running close to the shore. I mean, it's doable. It would be a handful, but it's doable. And like I said, you really don't worry about the time of day on the beach. As long as the water is either the tide's moving, you'll be fine. Incoming or outgoing, I like the incoming. But if it's outgoing, um, don't be afraid to fish it. And look for rips. You know, look for breaks in the sandbar. You'll have that trough if they're not in the trough. If you have a dip in the sandbar and you get um, rips coming off, rip currents, you know, don't get in the rip current, but don't be afraid to throw your fly toward a rip current and let that fly get, you know, swept out with the rip current because that's what happens to bait fish. Don't get in the rip current, whatever you do. Um, if there's a red flag, I mean, be careful, right? It's still the ocean that still wants to kill you. So in anywhere on the panhandle, those beaches fish like that. So we've talked about fishing the beach during the day. We talk about a few inshore spots, and there's lots of fishable water, especially if you have watercraft. Your flies are pretty straightforward. If you go to the Panama City, you go to the Panhandle, you know, uh, clousers, chartreuse and white clousers, solid white clousers, gray and white clousers. 
those are all buyable at stores. A certain time of the year, especially in the early spring, if there's a lot of rain, Panama City has freshwater rivers that feed into it and creeks. That water will go from green to a clear brown tannic. It won't stay that way the whole summer, but there might be a week or two where you get that clear brown tannic water. The entire bay goes that way. When that happens, go ahead and switch over to a, a tan and brown or a garnet and yellow. Usually you can buy those at fly shops too. White stays good, but don't be afraid to go to stuff with gold and yellow and brown and tans in it. And when that water goes back to clear green like it's supposed to be, clear to clear green, then you go back to solid whites, white and gray, um, chartreuse and white, uh, clousers, white, solid, solid white, white and chartreuse, deceivers always work. Enrico Pluglisi flies, the little baitfish flies, the little tiny silver ones I told you about before that look like baby pinfish in the early spring work. As the summer goes on, larger Pluglisi flies work fine. Poppers, first thing in the morning, if you get there at first light, throw a popper, work a popper, blind cast a popper. It will, it will bring them in. It will draw a fish that you can't see. These flats tend to be deeper. And because they're deeper, you don't always see fish tailing. They're there, but you don't see them tailing. You know, some of these flats, you're fishing in four or five foot of water. And the fish are there. They're feeding on pinfish. They're feeding on a little shrimp. Um, they're feeding on mud minnows, things of that nature. So like I said, you won't see them, but that doesn't mean they're there. So first thing, first light on a nice incoming tide, you know, 530 in the morning, throw a popper. And even after the sun gets up a little bit, keep throwing that popper. You'll get, you'll be surprised what comes up and hits it. Um, I have fished anywhere from six weights to nine weights in here. So they're all work, whatever you have, take. Of course, a six weight's going to be kind of hard to throw in the wind. But if you're there first light, hopefully the wind will be laid down for you. I like um, seven weights, eight weights, nine weights. Uh, if I'm on the beach, the nine weights not bad because you usually have to fight a lot of wind on the beach. So they work really well. Seven weights, great rod for inshore here. And there's lots of fishable water. So go down there and get it. Just keep an eye out for the sharks, the stingrays, the man uh, stingrays, the um, gators, and the jellyfish. I like to wade in, in long pants. Um, seducers also. Put seducers on your list for inshore in white and red and natural grizz. And doesn't take a whole lot of complicated flies. Um, you can get the flies at the fly store. The only thing I would say, if you do plan on fishing the beach, you can use your floating line, but that doesn't work as well as an intermediate sink. So if you have the ability to um, swap a spool out, or if you have the ability to uh, swap your line out, fish a floating line in the morning on the grass flats, and then if you go to the beach in the middle of the day, put on an intermediate sink line with a little short four to six foot leader. And then on the inshore stuff, a nine foot leader would be fine. It worked just fine for you. So if you have any questions, leave me a um, questions or comment. I will talk about other areas in the panhandle on future videos. Port St. Joe, Apalachicola, um, over to um, Carabelle. If you have any specific areas in Florida you want to know more about, let me know. I'll tell you what I can. Um, if you have any questions about Georgia, the coast of Georgia, I'll do what I can. So that's it for this video. Remember, keep your hooks sharp. Talk to you later.